Good morning, my name is John Krotek. I work at Nathan Benderson Park in Sarasota, Florida. I am the volunteer coordinator. And I've been asked to go over a few things about launch operation, uh, some safety things, and some things to look for when you're actually running one of these. Now, I'd like to say that we've had many, many, many people with no experience in boats uh, be very experienced by the end of a regatta. There's a, a few things that you want to think about before you even start the operation of a launch. And one of them is to make sure that you have all the equipment on board and that the boat is somewhat clean before you go out. Sand can actually fly up and hit you in the face and make operation uh, problematic. This boat is not a great example of what you want to start out with. They've been using this boat for an entire week of training with your own team and uh, with some pair of rowers out here. So again, this boat is not a great example, but it's to point out just that fact that you want to make sure the boat's clean. We have some, uh, the first thing that you want to think about with the operation of any boat, especially one with a motor, is safety. Safety of the boat, safety how you handle the boat, safety on the water, safety, safety, safety. We cannot stress enough how much or how important that is. This particular boat has all the necessary equipment that you need to operate it safely. First thing you see is that it has an anchor. You want to make sure that your launch has an anchor before you start out. You can see it's tied off to the cleat. You want to try to keep the line rolled up neatly before you start out. Sometimes the line in the deck of the boat can get stuck in between your feet or your, your legs and uh, you can basically have somebody fall in or you can trip inside the boat, making the ride very unsafe. So you want to keep your line, keep your anchor up towards the front of the boat. It'll help when you get on the water to keep the front down and it won't fly up as much. Also, you'll see here, you yeah, have your basic fire extinguisher. You wanna make sure that, that it works, that it's actually still within use. This one uh, is not within use. So you wanna make sure that the, uh, the gauge is pointing in the green. So I think this is one that we might have to get replaced. You have a kit here, basic tool kit. Every boat should have one. What you'll see inside is a strobe light. You actually have some flares, uh, a manual, a whistle. These are all things to signal if you do get in trouble on the water. You want to make sure that you have these devices on board uh, to make sure somebody could come and, and, and rescue you if you had to. This is a device that actually uh, it's very nice to have. The driver of the boat should actually wear this and attach this to the kill switch on the engine. We'll talk about that in a minute. But if you happen to go over, the kill switch gets yanked, the motor shuts off, and then you pull this and this self inflates. This is a really nice thing to have. Also, the boat, you may not fall out of the boat or you may not need to, to do any, you may not need to pull this. It's always good to have an oar on board the boat. This way, if you do happen to run out of fuel, you can actually paddle to the shore uh, in, in, in a safe manner. It's not good to paddle with your hands or with a two by four floating bike because you'll be out there forever. It's good to have one of these. Obviously a bag to keep all this safe in. And again, free of sand, log This is a flotation device called a PFD, personal flotation device. This one's worn around the neck. I highly recommend wearing it. If you happen to fall overboard, hit your head, the, the way this is designed, and make sure you use the strap. You know, they're designed to use straps. Uh, this one will actually keep your head and your body at an angle that, that makes it safe if you happen to strike your head and pass out. We have three of them on board. This one, it's always good to have at least one PFD for everybody that gets on the boat. Normally, there's three people on a launch when they're using it. But then there's many times when there's only one. So you want to look at your fuel tank. You want to make sure that there's no leaking of the fuel tank. You want to make sure that the connections actually fit snugly to the motor and to the fuel tank itself. You also want to make sure that when you go out, I know that John had this one, but this one's full. You want to make sure it's a good thing to make sure that your, that your fuel tank is full before you go out. I've seen many a launch boat driver start out in a race 
by race number three, they're out of fuel. And then it just becomes problematic logistically to try to get fuel to that boat. And it can also mess up a regatta. So make sure before you go out that you that your fuel is full. Uh, now we already did this, but I've seen this happen too. You want to make sure that your plug is in. This is a stern plug. You want to make sure that it's tight. You want to make sure you have as much water out of the boat as possible. Some of these older boats will take on water throughout the day. One thing I see in here, <coughs> excuse me, they don't have a bailer. It's good to keep a cup, maybe a half a gallon milk jug cut where you can actually bail water. Also, if you become skilled, you can run this thing full out, pull the plug out, and the water will actually run out. But I've also seen where people get in the boat, push it in the water, and the plug's not in. So make sure that the plug is in before you attempt to take this out on the water. Now, different outboards have different characteristics. The ones that we're used to here are Mercury's. You'll hear people say pros and cons. These are pretty reliable. Uh, we've had a fleet of, of these the last several years and they work really well. Uh, so we have it in the up position. A lot of times it's good to bring it in the shore in the up position because if you leave the prop down, Bob Whitford, operational manager here, refers to it as the Cuisinart. If you leave it down, the Cuisinart can get stuck in the sand and then it can be a real trick to try to get that boat out of the sand. So it's a good thing that when you dock this boat, especially on shoreline with sand like this, that you bring the motor up. There's a lever here, we can get into that, how that works here in a second. Very important item here. You see here, John, is the, is the kill switch. Uh, they have these special keys. This is the part that I say stays attached to your PFD or to your, your waist belt personal flotation device. It's a little plastic device. I've seen a lot of different configurations for different motors. But what this does is it basically clicks in here, you'll see, and then you, you turn it on. If you fall out of the boat, and I've seen this happen, people not using these, but you really should use it. It yanks on it, it immediately kills the motor. Uh, these outboard engines with these levers can actually be somewhat tricky if you haven't run them before. And I've actually seen skilled people sometimes have trouble maneuvering them. So make sure the kill switch key is on and in the up position. A few basic things about this motor is you have this pump ball here and before you even start the engine you should you should pump three or four maybe five times to get some fuel into the motor. I know that uh, you guys have a, a few really nice videos on motors and how they operate. I'm just trying to look at this some layman's uh, point of view. So you pump the ball up that's putting fuel into the motor. Maybe you can help me out here, John. This is an igniter here. That's gonna be your primer bulb. So that's gonna shoot a little bit of fuel directly into the carburetor. So that's just raw fuel going in there. If you over prime it, you can flood the engine. Um, but a cold motor on a cold day, you'll probably need the choke pulled, the choke lever just to your left This is there. a choke lever right here. And then you'll probably also need to give it one or two pumps of the primer bulb before it's starting to pull on the cord. Just like that. And then you wanna make sure that the lever stays down. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna lift this motor up. The most important thing when you're actually operating this boat on the water is your wake. We talked about safety. We talked about keeping your head on a swivel because there's a lot of activity even today. There's quite a few boats out here with uh, Wolverines out here training. And so if you go with a high wake or high speeds, you're gonna really mess things up. So you always wanna keep your head on a swivel. Keep attached to your kill switch maintain the boat at slower speeds as to not disrupt the rowers that are in the water. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to, we're going to lift this up, we're going to see if we can go ahead and get this started, and then uh, we'll go from there. So get into the boat, make sure the plug's in, make sure your fittings are all tight. We've already primed it. You've got all the safety equipment. What I'll do is go ahead and set this up. Put this on. Kind 
of uncomfortable. There's a lot of different types of PFDs. I suggest get one that works for you. But what's interesting is, is this basic model actually seems to be the most popular. So we'll go ahead and we're going to go ahead and we're going to attach this to something here. We're going to go ahead and lift this up. We're going to drop this lever up. And we're going to go ahead and just place the outboard, the Cuisinart, down into the water. Okay. We've already primed it. Let's put the kill switch on. You notice I, I lowered the lever, so make sure that you lower this. And then this particular model, this Mercury, has a forward, a neutral, N for neutral, and R, red for reverse, which doesn't look like it wants to go into. But once the motor starts, there you go, clicks into reverse. We want to put this in neutral to start this engine. So and neutral are, may not necessarily be directly on the end. You may have to kind of fidget with it, just like John's doing here, try to line it up and actually truly find neutral. If you find that you try to pull on this cord here and that you see either the prop turning or that's extremely hard to pull the cord, like it's actually locked in place and won't pull out, you're probably not neutral. And you might just have to fidget with that handle a little bit more there. And John's 110% correct. So you'll, you'll feel it kind of click in. I think right now it is a neutral. We primed it. Let's see if we can crank this baby up. Let it run for a few seconds here. See the water starting to come out. If you leave the engine up and you try to start it with the engine up, because it draws water through the engine, it'll actually overheat and it's not good for the engine. You need to really have the water going through it. So there you have it. That's how you uh, inspect your boat before you go. And again, please, safety, safety, safety. Slow thing. Slow it down. Yeah, yeah, just think slowly take your time don't rush and uh, always take your time never be in a rush don't be fatigued good tips from John and then also you have a on this mercury outboard engine you also have a kill switch here at the end it's a little red button here and uh, something happens and you need to kill it real quick you can also hit this one with the hand that you're using to operate it there you have it basic launch 101 how to get started I know that you guys are working on a series of videos, and I'm looking forward to, uh, to seeing what you guys come up with. Excellent. Be safe. Thank you.